hi everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have got a video for you all about the things i've learned from traveling i don't really know what to call this video yet but i'm going to split this video into like two sections so a section on what i'm really glad i took and had prepared before traveling to bali and then the second section is going to be on things that i kind of wish i took um and I realised I wish I took when I was travelling. So if you watched my last video, I did go travelling to Bali. It was the first time I've ever been travelling. It was the first time I went on a long haul flight in like a decade. Um, and I feel like I've learnt quite a lot of things and I thought this video would help any other people who are travelling for the first time or travelling to Bali. Um, so I really hope you enjoy the video and keep on watching if you want to find out more. Okay, so I've got my list here and I'm going to start off with um, the things that I am glad that I took with me. So the first thing that I'm glad I took with me is something called a wise card and let me show you what I mean. So this is the wise card. It hasn't got my card details on it because it's actually on the back and the wise card I think is a pure genius. So when I went traveling or like before I went traveling my um, tour group um, recommended taking a wise card instead of like your average credit or debit card and basically what the wise card does is it's basically like a multi-currency debit card so I loaded up my card with um, my home currency so in pounds so I put in like you can put in say like 400 pounds onto your account and then you transfer that £400 into the currency of the place you're travelling to. So because I was travelling to Bali, I converted that £400 to Rupiah, which is the currency that you use over in Bali. And I feel like, I think, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that if you transfer your money on the WISE card, um, it's a lot cheaper to convert than going to um, like a shop to convert your money. Like the the conversion rates are a lot cheaper and then what I did was I when I was over in Bali I found like um, cash machines in an ATM and I took out the money in rupiah and because I had already technically converted my pounds to rupiah I wasn't charged with the conversion rates over there and obviously it's a lot more expensive when you do that on an ATM over in the countries that you're visiting so I think this card is an absolute genius there's like over 50 currencies on this card and when I had my layover in Malaysia what I did was I transferred any leftover money that I had in rupiah um, into Malaysian ringgit so it's a lot it's genuine lifesaver because obviously when you're in different airports for layovers and stuff in a completely different country to what you're traveling to you do obviously need that currency or if you're using your debit card to pay for the food there if you're buying yourself some time in the airports um, again they will charge you um, the conversion rates and it's all obviously a lot more expensive so I do recommend like applying for a wise card wherever you're going even if you're going on holiday to Europe or something like that I think it's a genius because you pay less to convert the money um, if you are interested in getting um, this card I'll leave a link down below I do actually get um, if you sign up for it I do actually get like some benefits from it um, it's not sponsored or anything it's just one of those things to get people to sign up to the wise card so if you're interested in getting the wise card I'll put a link down below I genuinely think everyone should get it um, just because of the conversion rates and it was just so much easier just to take money out in the currency of the country that I was going to so that is number one okay so the second top tip and I don't think it kind of is a top tip to some people but it might be to others but having hard copies of all of your important travel documents so like insurance and obviously more recently because of covid um, evidence of your covid vaccines as I was going through the airport I was watching people kind of faffing looking through their bags for the documents or looking through their phones for the documents and it's so much easier if you just print it all off in a hard copy and have it all in one place which is my next point um because it just le like lessens up the queue time so i had all of my covid um evidence vac vaccine evidence printed off and when i got to um the airport in bali i was able to just whip it out prove to him that I had my vaccines 
I did obviously have to download the um, Indonesian version of the NHS app, but my proof of evidence, my evidence took ages to like be approved on the app. So I thought it was a better idea just to have the hard copy printed off. And it was so much easier when I got to the airport. He just looked at it and said that it was okay. And I was able to go through to the next station, which was customs. So I highly recommend you printing off like hard copies of like all of your important travel documents because you've got it there. You don't have to faff on your phone or anything like that. So that's my next top tip. Okay, following on from that, you've got all your important documents, you know, you've got your passport and stuff. I also recommend having like a documents traveler thing. <laughs> Don't know if that's actually what it's called, but basically this is a folder that holds all of your important um, documents that you need. I got this off of Etsy ages ago um, when I booked Bali, which was like in 2019 and I couldn't go obviously because of COVID, but this is personalised with my initials and when you open it up you've got a section for your passport, um, a section for like other important bits, a section for money, um, another section for money which but I popped my boarding passes in there. There's a section for a pen, um, highly recommend taking a pen when you're filling out you know the customs forms and then on the back there's more um, pocket space which is where I put my um, flight information, my insurance information and my COVID vaccine information. So it's all there um, together. Now you might hear some people say like don't put everything important all in one place because if you end up losing it or someone steals it you're kind of done for but I personally prefer having everything in one place so I know it's there so I so if I need my passport and I need my COVID vaccine stuff I just whip this out and I know it's in there and you just have to just take really extra care of um, this and because it's all in one place it's easier to just kind of grab and go so that's my next top tip is having it doesn't even need to be something like this having like a plastic wallet um, just to hold all of your important bits in so you're not faffing in your bag in in the queues and stuff it's all organized and all in one place okay so tip number four in order to stay organized I had to buy some packing cubes and these are a genuine lifesaver for your suitcase like honestly I don't think I would have survived traveling without them and some of the friends that I met um, on my tour when I went to travel to Bali wish that they had these um, traveling cubes because they just keep everything nice and tidy um, obviously I packed everything away but the ones that I bought which are from Amazon and I'll link down below um, came with this like little bag which again doubles up as a packing cube um, and inside you have a couple of packing cubes that look like this and I basically just packed all my clothes um, into like organised sections so I had like one for like underwear and swimwear and socks, um, one for like daytime clothes, one for nighttime clothes, that, like that kind of thing, depends on how you want to organise it but it just keeps your suitcase so much tidier than just dumping everything in your suitcase. Um, I, I I think they're a genius and I can't believe I spent this long without without them. Um, so yeah, travelling cubes are a must for travelling now and whenever I travel anywhere I shall be taking these along just to keep my suitcase nice and organised and tidy. I feel like with these as well I managed to fit in more things into my suitcase because I rolled up my clothes and popped them into the little cubes and I was able to fit in more. Um, don't actually know if that's true but in my head it's true um, but yeah that's tip number four get yourself some traveling cubes okay so number five when you are traveling I highly recommend getting a backpack now I'm a bit of a princess and I traveled with my big um, trip suitcase for like my main luggage but for my hand luggage I went for this little backpack here which I got from Amazon and I'll link down below it comes in loads and loads of colours and this is genuinely a lifesaver it is a bit grubby now because obviously I took it with me um, but this bag has so many different compartments that you can fit in loads and loads of things in um, in the main compartment I actually put in a packing cube with some clothes which will be my next point um, and then you've got like a section that's really really handy to put in your travel documents because it's nice and safe um, and then there's like a little 
um, I don't really know what this is called, a little flap that um, sits on top of your main suitcase so it doesn't fall off. Obviously there's a handle which is nice and handy. The um, straps are padded so it makes it everything more easier and comfortable to carry and I just love that it's got loads of different compartments. There's one at the bottom where you can put shoes but I didn't use that purely because the bag was so packed with lots of other things but um, this was a great carry-on bag because it was the perfect size to carry all the bits that I needed on the plane whilst my suitcase held everything else so I highly, re I highly recommend getting a backpack because obviously it's easier to carry as well and you can got and you've got your hands free to you know wheel your suitcase and things like that so that is tip number five so my final point for traveling um, that I thought about was basically pack clothes in your carry-on so I had clothes in my backpack um, and I say pack three to four days worth of underwear outfits that kind of thing because unfortunately Airlines might lose your suitcase. Um, someone on my tour actually had their suitcase lost when she transferred from Sydney over to Bali. So she was without her suitcase for three days. And so she had to go to the markets to buy clothes. Now, she was lucky in a way that in Bali, it is everything is a lot cheaper, but obviously it wasn't ideal. She got to, the ho she got to our hotel and basically had to go out again to buy a load of clothes and obviously it's not ideal because you're on a long haul flight that's literally the last thing you want so I always recommend packing clothes like three to four days worth of clothes um, and socks and underwear just to tide you over in case that ever happens it does mean that your carry-on is slightly more heavy but for me I, on a carry-on um, on the plane I don't actually need much just need like my phone my medication a drink like that kind of thing so I think it's definitely worth it if you pack three to four days worth of clothes and if you pack smartly so maybe you pack two pairs of shorts that you can rotate over like that kind of thing instead of packing like three dresses um, which take up like more more space you yeah I just I just think that it's really important to pack that, that kind of thing and again put it in the traveling cube so then it's all nice and compact um, and easy to kind of get out of your bag so that is tip number six pack clothes in your carry-on <laughs> move on to the next section of the video now and these are the things that i wish i took um when i went traveling so there are quite a few things that i wish i took actually and obviously the next time i go traveling i'm definitely going to be keeping these things in mind so the first thing that i wish i took was a bottle that was a flask so i actually took this bottle right here it's currently got blackcurrant squash in um and i'm a big advocate for taking your own bottle so you're you know using less plastic but i do wish i took my flask bottle this is my chilies bottle because it keeps your drinks cold um when i was obviously walking around the streets of bali it's obviously very hot and then when i was taking a chug of water from this bottle here it's not a flask kind of bottle I was drinking warm water which was not ideal because obviously the heat from the outside was making the water warm um, so I de genuinely wish I took this because it will keep it would have kept my drinks nice and cold you are actually allowed to carry bottles in your carry-on if they are empty so I, w I genuinely wish I took my flask bottle and as you're going through security or once you have gone through security you can ask um someone very kindly in like costa or something to fill up your bottle in heathrow airport they actually had stations to refill your bottles and so did um Kuala Lumpur airport in malaysia so there are places that you can refill bottles if you carry your bottles in a carry-on just make sure that your bottles are empty as you're going through security but yeah i really wish i took this bottle with me because it would have kept my drinks cold and i didn't i would it would have meant i wouldn't have and it would also mean that I didn't w try. I don't know how to word it. Basically, I wish I took this bottle with me because it would have kept my drinks warm and it would have stopped me from having to buy drink water from the mini marts because it's just a waste of plastic and a waste of money. Next thing I wish I took with me 
or more are, was insect repellent. Um, I am severely allergic to mosquito bites. Um, I kind of, like I knew in the back of my head I am. Um, so I did buy insect repellent. I bought, um, I've ran out of it now because I have to use so much of it, but the jungle formula from Boots, um, it just wasn't strong enough. I was spraying myself pretty much every couple of hours and then the mosquito still sniffed me out because I've got, apparently I've got really tasty blood. Um, and because of my allergic reactions, it just wasn't a pretty sight at all. Um, so I do wish I took more insect repellent with me. Um, it ended up like my, so my group ended up having to donate their insect repellent to me because I was just being bitten left, right and centre and my allergic reactions to them just wasn't pretty. Like, I don't know if you can see, I still, I've got scars um, over my arm because of my allergies to the mosquito bites but I wish I took more insect repellent with me and different kinds of insect repellent. Um, my friend on the tour recommended going to like a hiking or a camping store to get insect repellent because they're apparently a better, they've got more ingredients in them that deter, 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 is that the word? Um, the mosquitoes from biting you. I think at one point on the tour I was wearing three different insect repellents and when I did that nothing was going to bite me. I, in fact, I actually saw um, a mosquito kind of like fly towards my arm and then like flew away because I stank basically. Um, so yeah, I wish I took more insect repellent with me. Okay, so leading on from the insect repellent and being allergic to mosquito bites, I wish I took a first aid kit with me. Um, yeah, I should have listened to my mum. She, she had a first aid kit all laid out and I was like, oh, you know, I won't need a first aid kit. Like, I know I'm clumsy, but I should be fine. Um, so I took the pack of plasters or band-aids, um, if you're American, and I popped that in um, my suitcase. No, I wish I took like a full on first aid kit because I went through those plasters like literally within one day when I had the um, mosquito bites because I had to cover up the blisters with the plasters because I didn't want them to pop and get infected. Um, yeah, I wish I took first aid kit and it would have helped other people on my tour as well who like fell over and stuff. Um, antiseptic wipes were very, very, very in demand in my group. So I wish I took a first aid I wish I took a first aid kit. Okay, so the next item I wish I took more of was definitely hand sanitizer. Obviously, um, the sanitation over in Bali isn't as great as us in the UK. We you're not allowed to drink the water from the taps in Bali. So I feel like even after washing your hands, after going to the toilet in Bali, you need to sanitize your hands as well because like it's fine to brush your teeth with the water, but I think my stomach is so sensitive that I think that's how I got poorly, um, just from washing my hands. And then I have a habit of like biting my nails and stuff. Um, and obviously the water that you wash your hands with does have like, viruses within within the water so I wish I took more hand sanitizer because I went through the sanitizer like no tomorrow and obviously you can buy sanitizer over there but I do wish I had like my own already prepared so I didn't have to worry about that um when I was over in Bali so it's just those little things like I do wish I took more hand sanitizer with me to sanitize my hands the final thing that I wish I took with me or took more of with me is flowy clothes. So I purposely didn't take this top because it's quite tight and obviously it's hot over there so it would have made me all hot and bothered but I do wish I took more like flowy shorts um, and like nice bikini cover-ups. Um, I basically wore my Abercrombie shorts, they're in the wash now because um, I've literally just got back but I took my Abercrombie shorts with me because they were nice and flowy and loose they just made everything so much more comfortable, you know, getting in and out of before going to the beach um, and just walking around in. And I, I do wish I took more of those um, types of clothes. So the next time I go to like a hot destination, I'm definitely taking more flowy clothes with me. Another item of clothing that I wish I took more of is longer clothes. So like, I think I took one maxi dress with me and I think that helped stop the mosquitoes from basically eating me alive. Um, and I was really self-conscious of all of my mosquito bites because they were blistering um, and I only had the one maxi dress that covered covered up the blisters so I do wish I took more um, longer maxi clothes like I love like crop tops and shorts but 
I wish I had took that as an option just in case. So um, yeah, the final thing that I wish I took is more flowy items and like more maxi kind of dresses. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope that you found this video useful if you are going traveling, whether that is to Bali or to another um, country. Um, I really enjoyed making this video because I have learned so much from traveling and I cannot wait to go traveling again next year and I will obviously be keeping all of these points in mind for myself when I go traveling again. Um, let me know if you have any other tips that I have not included or let me know if you are going to use some of the tips that I've included. I would really really appreciate it um, knowing that I've helped other people out and enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye.